Donc, le professeur Derek Abbott, ben, c'est un collaborateur de long terme. Donc, on a identifié euh, par l'approche nanocyclique des molécules inhibiteurs de, de la cible RIPK2 en 2012 déjà. Et on n'avait aucune idée sur l'utilisation d'un inhibiteur de RIPK2. Vous voyez qu'on a pas mal avancé depuis. Donc, à ce moment, on a cherché, bien sûr, tout ce qu'on pouvait trouver sur RIPK2. Et on a trouvé deux brevets de GSK dans la maladie de Crohn. Et on a surtout euh, découvert, euh, bah, découvert toutes le, de, euh, les activités, les recherches du professeur Rabot, euh, qui est au Case Western Reserve University à Cleveland, Ohio, euh, qui a travaillé depuis dix ans sur la cible, euh, qui a découvert pas mal euh, 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 autour et qui est devenu un de nos partenaires qui nous a aidés à avancer justement le projet. Il ne pouvait pas être ici, mais au moins il a fait une vidéo et il décrit un peu sa perception de la cible, du potentiel. Et euh, c'est vraiment l'expert, le pape dans le domaine euh, de RIPK2. Et c'est extrêmement intéressant euh, ce qu'il a à nous raconter dans son vidéo de quelques minutes. Voilà. Autoimmune inflammatory disorders affect approximately 8% of the world's population, roughly 600 million people on this planet. Despite this, first-line treatments for diseases such as lupus, or ulcerative colitis, or rheumatoid arthritis remain the same drugs that were developed in the 1940s and the 1950s. And the more recent development of biologic drugs like the anti-TNFs only work in a fraction of the patients, a fraction of the time. There's an incredible unmet medical need and financial market for drugs that target these debilitating disorders. This opportunity is not without challenges, however. Finding drug targets that will be effective in patients but will have limited toxicity is difficult, but this is a challenge that we have accepted. The protein kinase RIPK2 coordinates the immune response to infle infection and inflammation. Too much RIPK2 activity, a hyperactive RIPK2, accentuates and exacerbates inflammatory disease. Collaborative work between OncoDesign's biotechnology team and my academic team has shown that inhibition of RIPK2 is, is efficacious in inflammatory disease. Using OncoDesign's proprietary nanocyclic kinase inhibitor technology, coupled with their iterative medicinal chemistry, they've now identified a preclinical candidate molecule that can halt RIPK2-driven inflammation. This orally prescribed drug could change the market in inflammatory disease. From my academic lab, we found and published in peer-reviewed literature that RIPK2 inhibition is efficacious in most models of Crohn's disease. OncoDesign's team has further shown that RIPK2 inhibition is efficacious in most models of ulcerative colitis and in most models of immuno-oncology-driven colitis. Importantly, with RIPK2 inhibition, the major drivers of the immunologic response remain intact, and we wouldn't expect the immunodeficiencies that you would see with the anti-TNFs or the JAK inhibitors. In fact, there have been no genetic mutations in RIPK2 associated with disease, and this fact, coupled with the lack of phenotype in mice lacking RIPK2, suggests that there might be very few side effects of RIPK2 inhibition. A last advantage of RIPK2 is that it's completely differentiated from what's currently on the market. As such, it could be used as a single agent or it could be combined by the clinician. RIPK2 is not involved in TNF signaling, and you could use an anti-TNF in addition to OncoDesign's RIPK2 inhibitor. RIPK2 is not involved in T-cell homing to the gut, so you could combine in TVO with OncoDesign's RIPK2 inhibitor. RIPK2 is not involved in JAK signaling, so you could use Zelgans in addition to OncoDesign's RIPK2 inhibitor. As a new target with a new drug, the possibilities are almost endless. This is a novel first-in-class and likely best-in-class pharmacologic that would be in a league of its own and would represent a major advance in the treatment of these devastating autoimmune inflammatory disorders.